Minecraft is a game about blocks. Everything is blocky, from the blocks themselves, to the animals, to the way the world loads in. But why? Why doesn't it just generate a smooth circle around you? You could theoretically need to draw less blocks so it could be less laggy, right? It's kind of a long story. Disclaimer, I actually totally forgot to mention it in my first video, but many things in this video and this series are only how Minecraft could work theoretically, and may need to do it in a more complex or somehow simpler way. Though this is the case for much of the series, much of it is actually how Minecraft works. If there's a link to a wiki page about something in the description, then it's confirmed. Otherwise, especially if the credit goes to Bethreeag's How to Make Minecraft in Unity tutorial series, then it's just how Minecraft could work in theory. Thank you for joining me to learn about this. Minecraft chunks, in case you don't know, are the 16 by 16 block areas that go from the bottom of the Minecraft world up to the top, and Minecraft practically revolves around them. In fact, it completely revolves around them, from where certain structures generate, to where slime can spawn, to how laggy your game is. When you load a world, it puts chunks in a 43 by 43 block area around the spawn, and works on generating the different parts of these chunks. You can actually see this on the Java Edition loading screen. Ever wonder what those colored pixels are? That's right, they're actually the chunks and which parts of them have generated. I don't know exactly what all the colors mean, even with the Minecraft wiki handy, but to my understanding, black is no progress or empty, middle gray is a chunk that started generating but nothing is actually finished, blue is usually next but there is some stuff in between, biomes have been chosen, the basic surface has been made, caves have been carved, and water caves have also been carved. Green is the features such as tall grass, trees, ores, lush cave spots, and all sorts of stuff. After that, there is light gray, which is the lighting. And finally, white is, you guessed it, full generation. I really don't know what the difference is between full generation and almost full. Probably stuff to do with entity ticking, but that's just my guess. After all the chunks are in their correct generation stage, the game begins. Again, why chunks instead of just picking blocks? The loading screen actually shows us one of the reasons this is so. It simplifies organization and can speed things up. That's kind of the entire reason why chunks are so important. You may not be a coder, but imagine how difficult it would be if everything was block by block, or if chunks were one by one by one. First off, Anything blocks would do to impact other blocks, such as pushing a block with a piston, has to communicate with those other blocks. Think of it like this. Say you're in a massive crowd full of thousands of individual people, and you need to ask a favor from the guy next to you. Not too hard, you can just ask them. What about someone next to them, or if you were spreading something around? Would it be faster to ask the person next to you to ask the person next to them? Or to ask God to ask them? <laughs> That's how code works for some reason. Maybe it wouldn't quite be faster, but for anything more than two or three rounds, it'll be quicker to pass it through God, or the world script in this case. To access any block or person in this example, you need to put its position into the world script. If it hasn't generated, you would need to calculate which block it would be. Pretty simple, if it's above the Perla noise value, we'll go more into this in episode 3, it'll be air, otherwise it'll be stone. Oh, but if it's air and it's below Y63, it needs to be water. Oh, okay, but what about caves? Well, if it's within a 3D Perlin noise threshold, basically we're just adding caves, it'll be cave air, which is a different block from air, by the way. What about grass and dirt? Okay, if it's close to the Perlin noise value, it'll be dirt, and if it's even closer, it'll be grass. What about the leaves of trees? That one's a little bit more tricky. Either you load in all the blocks around it when every time that a block is loaded, which is not feasible, or use a much more complex method. First, you check the block three blocks southeast and five blocks below the block you're trying to load. If it's the special 1% chosen block and it's on grass, set this block to a leaf. If not, check the block three blocks south, five blocks down, and two blocks east. Do this for a massive cube around the block, which is also very laggy, and it'll work. What about mansions? One of the biggest structures in the game. For this method to work, blocks would need to check hundreds of blocks in each direction. Also, what happens for randomly generated structures like villages? It's kind of hard to explain with words, but this screenshot sums it up. Yeah. 
So the only option left is when the block with the structure is loaded to change the blocks around it too. The world script will have a lot of work to do. Chunks make this much better. Instead of being in an infinite crowd, you're now organized into a lot of big groups. These groups are so organized, in fact, that they can be thought of as body parts instead of humans working together. Almost always blocks interacting with each other will be in the same chunks where blocks can communicate to each other almost instantly. A tree gets generated, it'll all be in one chunk, and if it's not, the chunks can just communicate instead of dozens of blocks having to. Now this can't always be so easy. What if you're carrying a redstone line across the world and it loads every chunk it passes through? Unfortunately, redstone cannot pass through unloaded chunks and cannot load new chunks. This can cause redstone contraptions to stop working when too far away from them. Chunks have different loading states, starting with entity ticking, where mobs, items, and other entities have their full abilities. Next is the ticking range, where blocks still have their full range of abilities, then border chunks in which things are not ticked, and finally, inaccessible chunks, where only world generation takes place. Redstone and command blocks only work in chunks that are in the ticking or entity ticking range, and that's why Minecraft needs and uses chunks. Finally, a misconception concerning chunks that needs to be addressed. I told you chunks are 16 by 384 by 16 block areas, not 16 by 16 by 16, but awesome player 98 I hear you saying. I've seen chunks generate up and down. Okay, so there are things called sub chunks, and they are the 16 block strips of chunks, and they can take different times to render if needed, but most things go according to the main chunks. A really old mod called, get this, Cubic Chunks, changed it so chunks were the other way, letting worlds be as tall as you could ever want. Not that it's too important to vanilla, I'm just mentioning it so that you know it exists. And now you know what Minecraft chunks are, how they generate in the world, and what order they do it in, and you're no longer confused if chunks are vertically stacking or not. Join me next time to learn how Minecraft's terrain generation works in a different way than you're used to. And make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any. Episodes come out every Friday at 3pm Central Time, so make sure to catch them live. Awesome Player 98 out!